Um, I thought I should uh, go ahead and continue moment generating functions with a discrete because we've just looked at a continuous for the exponential. Um, here's a discrete density function. Uh, notice he is legal, um, put in one, two, three, four, he sums up to one. So he's a valid, uh, well, I should be careful, mass density. I, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's find his moment generating function. So I always write the definition here so I remember what it is. Um, so if, if I have this, then I know exactly what to do because this is just law of unconscious statistician that says this is p of x times e to the um, xt over the support. x goes from 1 to 4. So this is just the sum of x over 10 e to the xt from x equal 1 to 4. So this is equal to 1 tenth uh, e to the t plus 2 tenths e to the 2t plus 3 tenths e to the 3t plus 4 tenths e to the 4t. So this is the moment generating function of this discrete random variable. And you can kind of see when uh, x is equal to 1, there's the mass function. When x is 2, there's the probability at 2, probability at 3, probability at 4. And so now if you wanted to find like the mean, you would just take the first derivative of this with respect to t and stick in t equals 0. Um, I wonder if I did that in the maple worksheet. Let's, I bet I did. So let's go. It's not hard to take derivatives of this, right? I mean, um, well, I put it in maple. Let's see. So over here, so there is my p of x. Um, there's my moment generating function that we just did. Uh, I'm going to take the derivative and put in t equals 0. And that's 3 to 0, which is 3. What am I doing down here? Oh, I'm finding the expected value by p, p of x times x, which we did before, which is 3. So, I mean, we have two ways, right? I mean, of finding expected value. Now, we can go back to definition, which is just p of x times x, or we could go to moment, we could find its moment generating function and then take the first derivative at t equals zero. So um, you have options now. Um, what else did I put in here? I put a, uh, here's a binomial. Um, remember what a binomial looks like. In fact, I wrote it out here. Here's the um, probability mass function. Oops, sorry. Here's the probability mass function right there for the binomial. And then I'm just multiplying by e to the tx. Um, I stuck this in maple and just said find me a nice sum for this and make it look a little bit nicer. So here's what the moment generating function is for a binomial. And if we want to find its mean and variance, we take the first derivative with respect to t. So this would be n, 1 minus p plus p e to the t um, uh, to the n uh, Why is this bothering me, right? This is just, um, I'm doing it with respect to t, so that's just the derivative of the inside, right? And the outside is still, I, I, okay, just a minute, just a minute. Okay, so I have a mistake. Maybe I should take calculus again. Uh, let, me, let me cross this out. I'm, I'm not thinking right. Sorry, um, I'm taking the derivative of this with respect to t. I should, oh wow, I should be more careful. So take the derivative of the outside, right, by the chain rules. So this is n times 1 minus p plus p e to the t raised to the n minus 1 times the derivative of the inside, which is um, p e to the t. So this is the first derivative, and I'm going to stick in t equals 0. So what do we get? n times 1 minus p plus p e to the 0 times p e to the 0, which is um, n times 1 minus p plus p times p e to the 0 is 1. So this is equal to n. This right here is um, 
uh, this is minus p plus p is 0, so this is 1, and this is p, so this is just n times p, which you already know is the expected value of a binomial. So that makes sense. Define the variance, I would take um, the second derivative to find the second moment. So I did this in, uh, let's go backwards, I did this in Maple. Um, let's push a restart. Um, there's just the, uh, right there is the probability mass function. Wow, that's terrible because I have p in there twice. So let me, let me rewrite this because this bothers me. Um, otherwise, I don't think it knows what's happening. Um, the moment generating function is p of x times expected value of e to the tx over the support. Okay, so um, if I want to find the moment generating function, well, I'm just, well, actually I already simplified it rather nicely. Now I'm going to find the first derivative at t, and now I'm going to stick in t equals 0 into that, and it makes it look a little bit messy, but it's n times p. I'm going to take the second derivative, stick in t equals 0, simplify it. I'm going to subtract, um, and now you can see this right here is just n, uh, remember the variance for a binomial. Of equal to um, n times p times 1 minus p. And that's what we have there if we just write it a little bit more nicely. So um, I think I'll just leave this here before I make another mistake.